Biological magnification. Biological means it has to do with life, and magnification is when you have more of something, or it gets bigger and bigger. So let's take a look at that. So biomagnification occurs when contaminants like mercury or PCBs, and here's the important part, that don't easily degrade, um, increase with each link of the food chain. So in seawater, these persistent molecules stick to small particles and phytoplankton. So here's the example. Here's, let's say, mercury. Um, and then the phytoplankton eat the mercury. And then, oh, this might be a better picture. But anyway, um, the phytoplankton will eat lots and lots of zooplankton. So this stuff will, sorry, the said that backwards. So the zooplankton will eat lots and lots of phytoplankton. And let's say this stuff is stuck to them. So you'll have a certain amount of that in here. And these organisms will typically take in nutrients and excrete waste, but they're not going to excrete this stuff because it doesn't break down. And so then the little fish will eat um, the zooplankton, which ate phytoplankton. And then the whatever the contaminants were in here will be in this one. And then this one will eat more than its body weight over its lifetime, right, in the smaller fish. And so these bigger organisms will get the contaminants from every single organism that they ate. So you can see the red line, the, the, the red stuff is supposed to represent the toxic stuff, and that gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you go. And so the dolphins eat lots and lots of fish, and those fish have contaminants in them, and the dolphin ends up getting more contaminants than the smaller fish because they eat so many of those fish. And the dolphin is able to excrete a lot of waste, but it tends to not excrete the stuff that, um, that doesn't break down easily. So small fish eat the phytoplankton, or the zooplankton that eat the phytoplankton, but the contaminants can't be broken down and are absorbed intact by the fish. So that's this step. When small fish are eaten by larger predators, the process repeats again and again up the food chain. Each sub subsequent predator receives a higher dose of, than the previous one. Animals at the top of the food chain, this one, such as dolphins, receive the most concentrated dose of contaminants with every meal. And so here's a picture of that. You have some mussels here, and they're absorbing um, their filter feeders. And so they absorb all the contaminants that are in the water, or lots of them anyway. And then this fish will eat those, and then this fish will eat that one, and then you might eat that fish. And so if there are contaminants here, there'll be more contaminants here because these are eating more than their body weight, and they're not excreting the contaminants. And then this one eats that one, and so it will take all of the contaminants of every single fish that it's eaten. Those contaminants will typically get stored in the fat, and they stay with the fish, and they keep building up and building up. So you're, you always have a, a little bit of a concern when you eat um, at the top of the food chain. Better to eat the smaller fish. They're, more, they're less likely to have these contaminants in them. Here's another example. So here um, are some phytoplankton, and then the phytoplankton are eaten by the zooplankton. And so anyway, let's say there's 0. 0.000000, three parts per million in the water. Um, by the time it gets up to the zooplankton, it's much more concentrated. And so this is the amount in the water. Here's the amount by the, get, the, amount by the time you get to zooplankton. And then the small fish will eat the zooplankton. So that's this step. And they have to eat way more than their body weight because they live a long time and they keep eating all of this zooplankton. And the DDT doesn't tend to get excreted. It tends to stay in their fat. And so at each step of the way, um, as you go up the food chain, you're looking at smaller and smaller numbers of organisms or smaller and smaller biomass or energy, but you end up getting more and more and more concentrated DDT. So by the time you get to fish, you, I mean to uh, the birds that eat the fish, that ate the little fish, that ate the zooplankton, that, that ate the phytoplankton, you end up getting um, quite a bit of this DDT. And so DDT was a problem for a long time because it makes um, the shells of of um, bird eggs very soft, and so the birds would tend to sit on their eggs and break them. And so there are, for a long time, top predator birds that, um, that weren't reproducing effectively.